Hello, UNPL fans, and welcome to the first edition of the UNPL PRs. My name is DW, but you could just call me Dell. And today, we are going over some post-draft rankings. If you guys are excited, please leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe. And if you're from the UNPL, all opinions are my own. Don't hate me. Because at the end of the day, it's just Pokemon. Um, we're going to go kind of right into it here. Um, the whole point of PR is to kind of give a, a generalization of what we think is good and what we don't think is good within a draft, um, at least in these first couple weeks. And then, you know, as it moves on, then we move into battles and things like that and how people are playing and what matchups are happening and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's a bit of a rundown on how PRs are going to work. We are doing tier lists. Now, I didn't steal this from Joey. I actually had the same idea as him, and he just did it first on his live stream so that's unfortunate for me but that's all right um here we are anyways uh to start off we're gonna get right into it with the charlotte chandeliers coached by shadow stitch uh team you will see on screen right now he's got dark Rai, zapdos iron treads rillaboom sneezler basculegian male and that is a terra cap florges polytoed did not the dunsparce just regular dunsparce and ariados um this one for me is right here on a tier um dark eyes aptos iron treads for the room sneezler perfect super great draft um Florges and bascal legion are nice i appreciate the addition of the polytoad in there um i don't know how often he's gonna bring rain um i do think the dunsparce area dose could be like taken you know changed up just a little bit um if, if the last two picks were slightly different like he's it's probably like a border between like just on the cusp of S and a you know it might get changed near the end of the video anyways but it's right here for me it's a really fun looking draft dark is super super broken and um i think shadow is gonna have a really fun time with this team i think it synergizes really well um rillaboom and unburdened sneezler coupled with dark uh the bulk of zapdos iron treads uh, Florges, and I mean, even the Dunsparce to an extent, uh, offering a lot of value for this team. So I really like Shadow's team to start off. Um, and yeah, uh, moving on, we now have the commissioner of the UNPL. It's Danny Mac. My boy Danny uh, has Ursuluna Blood Moon, Infernape, Mandibuzz, Monkey Dory, Electrode Hisui, Azumarill, Ambipom, Tinkaton, Alomomola, Hoopa, and Chargebug. Now, Ambipom and Hoopa being the Terra Captains on this team. Um, I actually don't mind this team all too much. I will say, I do struggle a little bit to see where the synergy lies with it. Um, you know, there's not exactly a great Trick Room setter for, for Ursaluna. I mean, Hoopa can do the job, kinda. I believe Monkey Dory also gets Trick Room, but not having that option with Ursaluna does make it a little bit worse. Um, Ursaluna, extremely bulky and able to function on its own without that, but it is a major benefit. Um, I do think a lot of its bulk on this team, however, is passive. Uh, Aloma Mola and Mandibuzz are kind of more of sit there Pokemon. Um, Aloma Mola, especially. Now, it did get Flip Turn um, added back to it, which is a major benefit considering Wish Passing sets no longer have to run Baton Pass. Um, however, it, it is still kind of taunt bait and it still doesn't really break through a lot of things that want to run substitute. Uh, I think Danny might run into a couple issues with like teams trying to set up on him. Um, but he does have really good revenge killers and stuff like Bandit Azumarill. Um, Technician Ambipom is going to force a lot of prep out of other teams. Uh, I probably see a lot of Rocky Helmet on the other side. Um, the big winner on this team, at least for me, is Infernape and Monkey Dory, the little monkey core that he has going on there. I think those two are going to pair really well together from an offensive standpoint. They really break well for each other, and uh, I'm really excited to see how Danny's going to use this team. With all that being said, though, I do have it in B tier. I think the synergy could be a little bit better. Um, I think Danny would agree with me as well on that, but I definitely think this is a team that can do damage considering the, the very potent offensive threats on it. I just think... A lot of the bulkier options on the team are very passive in in uh, what they want to do and kind of how they function around things. So uh, good luck to Danny this season. I, I'm excited to see how he uses the team. Next up, you'll see on screen uh, is Flygon, coach of the Florida Flygon. Uh, Flygon has Baxcalibur, Slowking Galar, Tinglu, Iron Moth, Ogre Pond Water, that is Terra, 
Fortress, Kilowattro, Spiritomb, Halucha, Espeon, and Crocolore. Um, another really interesting team. I, I'm i not uh, a huge fan of um, Sloking Iron Moth myself. I think that they don't pair together all too well. Um, and considering the, the main resistance on the team to Earthquake is Ogre Pond Water, who you're going to want to be tearing most of the time. Um, or bringing in like hard halucha kilowattro. I think there might be some slight issues with that. I also think the team is relatively rocks um, weak. Espeon does help shore up a lot of that, but it will involve a lot of careful predictions. Fortress is an okay spinner, and halucha's defog is usable. However, you don't really want to use halucha as a defog, or at least not in the current, um, at least quote-unquote meta of things uh I, I think there's other things that could be utilized um it's not to say it's a bad team inherently though bexcalibur uh being pivoted into from slow king Galar is phenomenal um i just think a lot of the offense on this team is going to come from the heavy special attackers in iron moth and kilowattro um ogre pond water does offer a ton of you know quick damage but it is going to really struggle um, to, to stay healthy with this team, not having like wish support or anything like that, I think could be detrimental to it. It's not a bad team though at all. I think Flygon has a lot of options with what he can do with it. It's just not something I see um, being easily maneuvered, uh, like easily piloted. I think Flygon will have to play very well to, to maximize the amount of um, amount of like output that he'll get out of this team to use a bunch of jargon words i think he's gonna have to play well to make the team work very well but that's most pokemon um this one's kind of a border pick for me it's almost a but i do have it just in b tier i think it's probably the top b tier team we have on this list if i'm being honest with you it's very close to being in that a i think a couple little changes in those last couple picks and maybe getting you know slightly better removal or something along those lines um could could benefit it but uh removal also kind of a foreign concept in gen 9 with how many things can run boots so uh i'm excited to see how flygon does good luck this season and uh best wishes to you next up we have a prater and the manchesney park Slowpokes. uh a prater rocking out with mew walking wake great tusk diancy nine tails vigavolt victory bell dusk noir bisharp tauros and ice q um i actually really like this team from a prater uh, i think it is relatively good enough sun to help make walking week work as well as having great test support which is really really nice for it um i'm not a huge fan of the vicavolt pick just because it doesn't have roost anymore i think vicavolt um can really struggle in certain matchups and it's forced into agility a lot more than i think it wants to be whether it's agility or just having to be choice specs uh victory bell's a really fun pick i think having the chlorophyll option on the back end um especially with terra uh, could be really nice to help break through uh, the things that Victory Bell struggles with, mainly being those steel types. Uh, so I'm really excited. I hope to see some Terra Fire, like um, Weather Ball, Victory Bell sets, and things like that uh, coming out of A Prater. And I think the Hazard support is really, really nice for Walking Wake. Between Mew and Diancie, uh, it offers a lot in terms of stack. Just because both those mons have a lot of staying power, uh, I think it will be very difficult to get through a Prater's kind of like slow bulkier offense uh, with that being said Tauros does offer a little bit of speed besides that though the fastest mons walking wake and I do think a Prater may struggle with being crept um, by faster Pokemon outside of like victory bell in the sun so uh, I do want to watch out for that with a Prater however I do think this team is absolutely in a tier um phenomenal job from a prater here i think you know there the speed is is the main thing keeping it out of s tier that's not to say it's not a very very usable draft and i'm excited to see how a prater does this season good luck to you my friend and uh take care next up we have misery gear in the naruta hoppers and i really hope i said that correctly i checked it on google i if i got it wrong i apologize um, but I gave him my best shot. Um, Misery rocking out with Pheasantipity, Corviknight, Garchomp, Lycanroc Dusk, Hoopa Unbound, Ditto, Tauros Blaze, Inteleon, being a Terra Captain, Toad Scroll, Masquerade, Pikachu, and Frostlass. Um, first off, I understand uh, the new Pokemon 
fun stuff. Uh, but Pheasantipity in the one pick is very, very not good. Did luck out getting Garchomp in the three. Thank goodness for misery. Um, this draft is, is kind of everywhere for me, though. I don't see a lot of synergy in it. I think it's really, really hampered by ice types. Um, it doesn't have a bulky water at all. Corviknight's neutral to ice. Garchomp's four times. Toadscrolls four times. Like, Tauros Blaze does a little bit of, you know, what it needs to to help out with that. Uh, and Hoopa's Unbound Special Defense alongside, like, Pheasantipities can help make up for, like, major Ice Beam stuff. But I just don't see a world where this team functions without some extremely good play i do think webs are actually pretty useful for it the unfortunate part though is the the main removal is going to be corviknight's defog it's not to say toad scroll can't rapid spin it's just oftentimes you don't get into a position for toad scroll to rapid spin um i've you know i see drafts like this a lot of the time and they like to hazard stack i do think hazard stacks a great way to go with something like this i just think it's kind of missing out on on building around the garchomp uh, or the pheasantipity considering it was the first pick um instead it just feels like a lot of pokemon that don't really want to fit together i'd love to be proven wrong though i think terra and Teleon is something that could be really really fun uh, in the long run and i think frostlass is really underutilized in the current metagame i think ghost and ice type stabs being able to be spammed alongside being able to be tarred um makes for some really good stuff i will say with five points remaining in the draft i think some picks could have been improved upon um but i'd love to be proved wrong this seems like a draft that is going to be very geared to what misery wants to play with for me personally though i do have it in c tier i just i can't see myself using it i can't see other people truly succeeding with it but I've never seen Misery play, so I'd love to see Misery prove me wrong with this one and uh, completely like shoot up the rankings as the, the weeks go on here. Uh, good luck to you, Misery, and uh, please try to prove me wrong. I hope you're right. Um, next up, we have Sir Scrub Supreme uh, rocking out with uh, Chen Pao, Clefable, Gliscor, Empoleon, Skeleturge, Gudra, Mian Chao, uh sand slash sinistra squawk ability and tropius and he is the head coach of the florida dirge uh which i really enjoy because i am a florida gators fan myself for college football go gators um this team is really really solid uh i think the last two picks are kind of the only ones where i'm i scratch my head a little bit um, but besides that, Chen Pao, Clefable, Gliscor, really, really solid three there. Skeledurge offering more support. It's bulky. It's fat. Mian Shao offers a ton, especially with Terra, um, not having to, you know, worry as much. And being able to be a regenerator is a really big thing, too. Just being a, a better pivot, uh, considering it doesn't have to remain that fighting type is really nice. I think Tropius and Squawk ability, a little bit of kind of like joke picks. Um, but I'm fine with that. I think there's absolutely a matchup that you could see Squawk Ability coming in uh, just because of uh, its typing and things like that. There's not a lot to say about the team overall. I think it, you can look at it and just understand that it's going to be bulky, it's going to be fat, it's going to wear you down, and then Shin Pao and Min Xiao are going to come in and just really, really hurt you. Uh, for me, this is absolutely an S-tier draft. Very good job by Scrub. I'm super excited to see how well this team goes. Uh, over the course of the season here, I think that Chen Pao could absolutely be the kill leader in the league with this kind of support around it. Good luck to you. And uh, yeah, moving on now, we have JB Westside, coach of the Las Vegas Cinder Aces. JB drafted Iron Valiant, Komo'o, Torterra, Hisuian Samurai, Moltres, which is a Terra captain, Scizor, Zoroark Hisui, Electros, Avalug Hisui, Reverum, and Daushban. Now, this is a draft that I actually had to spend a lot of time looking at to see if I actually liked it. And I came to the conclusion I did. Now, in a traditional sense, I don't think it's it's overall like, oh, this is a good bulky pivot and things like that. But I think what it does well is keep spikes up as well as pressure with priority very well. Now, Iron Valiant without Terra is definitely not as good as with Terra. But the games that you can play with Iron Valiant uh, and Hisuian Zoroark, as well as um, Electros and Hisuian Zoroark, are very, very fun. 
Komo'o is also something I'm super excited to see in draft uh, this season. I think it's absolutely one of the best dragon types in the format, and I also think it's a really good fighting type. My one gripe with the team is it is very fairy weak. I understand having Scizor and Reverum uh, does kind of shore that up, but neither of those are overly sped def walls. And um, with a lot of the meta being able to run ground and fire coverage, I do think that he may struggle a little bit with uh, getting around that. Torterra also not being a Terra Captain does concern me a little bit. I think Torterra would benefit more from Terra than Moltres potentially. And I think potentially Moltres could also have been swapped off of being a Terra Captain. That being said, uh, Moltres is extremely, extremely good at being a fat, bulky wall, especially when it tears. Um, I think I'm more just would rather lean into the offensive aspects of Shell Smash Torterra or even the defensive aspects of like Iron Defense Body Press Torterra than I would Moltres, um, just considering it doesn't have to run boots every single week as opposed to uh, Moltres, who's normally going to be forced into those boots uh, even if it is bringing a Terra set. So um, I'm excited to see how this draft goes. JB is actually my bubble pick um, for B and A, but I do have JB in that lowest A tier spot. I think this draft could be very, very fun to use. The offensive pressure is going to be extremely overwhelming, and I think if JB keeps his foot on the pedal, this draft could function very, very well. So I'm excited to see JB. Uh, he's back in draft first time in a while, um, and uh, I'm super excited to see how he utilizes this team here this season. Next up is Onesie Bayonet. And the Sully Hull Skarmors, um, Ogre Pond, Teal, Chi Yu, Quaquaval, Sylveon, Iron Hands, Bronzong, Cyclozar, Yan Mega, Grottle, Palisand, and Zudoru. Um, this team for me starts off really strong, I think. I think when we get down to past Bronzong, it falls off a bit, though. I'm not a huge fan of Cyclozar. I think it's really passive. I kind of think it's a trap mon. However, it does offer rapid spin for the team, which I think is very valuable. So I can understand grabbing it. Um, Yan Mega is a really, really cool. However, Yan Mega without Terra, I'm not too sure about. Tinted Lens, Terra, Yan Mega, and it just seems like very, very, very strong. Um, I I'm not sure how well it functions without it. That's not to say that like it, it can't be used um, without it. It's just I don't know how well it will function. Um, and then I I just don't like the Grottle pick. I'm gonna be honest with you. For six points, I think Grottle is a complete overpayment, um, especially considering Grottle does not get access to something like Earthquake, does not get access to something like Rock Blast. It really just doesn't get access to a lot of things. Um, it is a good Evil Light defensive Pokemon, but with it being a Terra Captain, especially at six points, I'd almost rather it be Palisand um, getting that Terra Captaincy. Um, and that being said, I also don't think Palisand is is overly a great pickup on this team. Um, I think considering how slow it, it really is to begin with, um, it, it doesn't do a whole lot. It being the only kind of spin block is not great either. And I just think with how much like Ice coverage is 100% coming into this team every single week. I think pa it's going to be very difficult to to justify Palisand coming in all the time. That's not to say that the fat things aren't fat, though. Iron Hands is really, really good at sponging up a lot of those hits. Same thing with Bronzong. They are a little bit more passive if you're running them like in Spadef and defensive natures. Um, but the beauty of Iron Hands, at least it can slowly pivot out into something like a Chiyu or the Ogre Pond. Um... But speaking of things that are kind of slow, I, I think the draft is a little weak on its speed tiers. Um, Cyclozar being kind of the fastest thing you're looking at. Um, then down to Ogre Pond Teal. Not to say that that's a bad thing, but when both your fast Pokemon are weak to ice. I do think you're going to run into a lot of issues um, with Scarf, you know, offensive revenge killers consistently coming in and consistently putting on pressure. And then, you know, the main removal at that point being the Cyclozar or Quaquaval Rapid Spinning can cause some problems. So um, it's not my favorite draft, but it's definitely functioning. I definitely think Quaquaval could be a big thing. Ogre Pond is wonderful, wonderful Pokemon. And the fact that you can actually hold an item on the Teal Mask one is really beneficial. Um, it's not my favorite draft, but it's probably right in the middle for me. Um, I'm not sure if I can say 
more good things about it, but I really can't say any bad things about it. I think it's more than functioning. I'm excited to see how Onesie uses it. I think it will be, you know, one of those drafts that's 500 off the bat, and it's just how well the player plays. And if Baynet can play uh, well enough, I think it's going to be a really, really good season for him. So looking forward to it. Good luck. And uh, yeah. Next up, we have Just Lucas and the Paradise Protocol. Manaphy, Ninetales, Dawnfan, Golden Ghost, Snorlax, Terra Captain, Ogre Pond Fire, Dragulge, Thunder Therian, Metacham, Terra Captain, and Bombardier. I'm going to be straight up honest and just put this out of the way right now. This is absolutely my favorite draft of uh, this division. Um, I think Manaphy is extremely good. I think Ninetales Alola giving screen support to the Manaphy is extremely good. I think screen support for Ogre Pond Fire is extremely good. Um, it's not, you know, exactly the fastest draft in the world, but, you know, lacks Dawn Fan, Golden Go offering a really, really good kind of fatter middle, especially with screen support. It's going to be really, really hard to break a Snorlax when it can Terra and it has screen support. I think that's going to be really, really cool to watch. Um, Thunder Therian also being able to use Weather Ball now opens up a ton of opportunities for, you know, Life Orb sets and Agility sets because it can click Weather Ball and Thunderbolt. Bolt Beam coverage is basically perfect. Um, and I, I'm just, I really like this draft. I think it's super fun to use. I think it's got the right amount of hazards. Uh, T-Spike option, it's got regular Stealth Rock option, it's got screen support. Manaphy is also phenomenal, especially with a new move, Take Heart, um, giving it a Calm Mind boost, as well as removing any status ailments. I think it's really, really solid. It's going to be really, really hard to break through a lot of this team. It's my personal favorite. You could fight me on it as much as you want, but this is absolutely my favorite draft of the division. Uh, Lucas, I'm looking forward to seeing you absolutely dominate with this. I think this draft is bar none a finals draft if i had to pick a finals winner right now it is probably you or our next team and that's bread pudding um and the toronto tinka tanks uh dragapult palafin zarud heatran mamoswine screamtail flamigo magnazone kamala and glimmet i don't know how you get the first two mons together um I think that's crazy that you could drag a Pulp Palafin. I think it's going to be very, very, very annoying for teams to prep for you. Uh, Zarud, phenomenal Pokemon. Heatran, really nice combination there with the Dragapult, giving you a solid Fairy Resist. Uh, Mamoswine is really, really good. Rock Support, Screamtail, also Rock Support. Glimmit's a really fun little, you know, uh, I need a Grounded Poison. Uh, I could use some Toxic Spikes and Spikes. I get it. Uh, Rapid Spin Komala offering a little bit of Hazard Removal, which I do think is kind of the one weak spot on this team is Hazards are going to kind of be annoying for it. However, you know, that's to say if things can live long enough to get them up. Uh, Flamigo and Magnezone being Terra Captains is also really, really good, especially because you trap Steel types with Magnezone. Um, super underappreciated aspect of Magnezone, especially when you're Terra Captaining it. Trapping something that, you know, stops Palafin from winning or stops Dragapult from winning is so, so key, and it forces prep. Um, with Shed Tail almost every single week, which I think is really, really nice for you. I'm super excited for this draft. It does slot in to uh, my number two here. Uh, I just think from an offensive perspective and a balanced perspective, it does really well, especially with the wish support from Scream Tail back into things. Um, it is going to be forced into that a lot of the time, but I think it'll do it well. And having Komala there as secondary wish support is never a bad thing. I love the little guy. And I think Bread Pudding's got a phenomenal team. I think it's, you know, the top three teams are the top three teams for a reason here. Next up, we do have uh, Arsenal MC and the Haw River Hound Dooms, Iron Bundle, Rotom Heat, Zapdos Galar, Glamora, Roaring Moon, Pelipper, Trevenant, Pain Urchin, Copperaja, Carbink, and Oranguru. Now, Trevenant and Copperaja are the Terra Captains on this team. Um, I'm not super in love with this team. Uh, I do kind of get where it's coming from. You know, Pelipper and Bundle together giving you the spam and the rain. Uh, Roaring Moon without Terra, however, I don't think is super great. You did get it round five, though, which is a really nice spot to snag it. I'm not entirely sure how often Pinurchin 
with Iron Bundle is going to come alongside Pelipper. Um, I do think it's a lot of, you know, go all in on Iron Bundle. For me personally, though, I do think Iron Bundle is kind of a trap Pokemon. Uh, it's very boom or bust. If you do boom with it, it's going to do really, really well. However, if you bust, you bust hard. And my problem is I'm not seeing a lot of other things that can really make up for it if it was to go down. Uh, Zapdos, Galar, and Roaring Moon being really the only two things beside it that I think can pick up the slack if Iron Bundle does have an off game where it's missing moves or it's just not able to really make it in the matchup. And I'm not sure if I'm fully confident in a Roaring Moon being my best Pokemon or a Zapdos Galar being my best Pokemon going into a week. I do think, however, Glamora fits this team really, really well. Uh, hazard support from Glamora, Carbink, and Pinurchin, um, as well as Copperaja, uh, offers a lot in terms of hazard stack. The problem being you know, your your main spinner is your Glamora, so you also run the risk of getting stacked back. It'll be interesting to see. I think boots are going to be forced a lot onto this team as opposed to, you know, something like a Damp Rock and something like a Life Orb or a Choice Specs on the bundle. Um, it is, you know, something to be seen, but uh, I don't think it's unusable. I think it can make sense on paper. I'm just not fully convinced that it has enough offensive capabilities outside of the iron bundle to actually close out some matches if bundle was to go down uh, for that reason i do have it in b tier uh, it's not to say i think it's a overall bad team i just think it's not quite what it needs to be i think a couple tweaks here and there and it can be really really good so i'm super looking forward to it good luck to you this season arsenal and uh yeah and now our final coach here for the narang Noranga division uh, is Sunak, uh, coach of the Texas Tyrants, currently hosting a roster of Meowskarada, Rotom Wash, Jirachi, Delphox, Noivern, Weezing Galar, Slitherwing, Jolteon, Miss Magius, Ursarang, Typhlosion, Husui, and Luxray. This team is so close to being very good. My main issue with it is why Typhlosion, Hisui, and Luxray at the end? You already have a Delphox, you already have a Jolteon, I just, and a Miss Magius. I just don't fully understand it. Um, I think a ground type would have been much more utilized, like better, better suited for this team. Um, something like a Gastrodon or even a Dug Trio would be really fun for trapping things that beat Mouscarada or beat Jirachi. Um, and it, it, it just doesn't quite work out how I think it should. I think it's a lot of mid-tier Pokemon outside of Meowskarada and Jirachi. And not having Terra Noivern, I think, is kind of... Um, I think you're missing out on a lot of offensive capability out of the Pokemon. Uh, it's not to say Noivern's a bad Pokemon, but it really, really benefits from having that Terra typing. Uh, Jolteon is... I can understand, but I'm not fully convinced on Miss Magius, and considering you do have five Terra points remaining, I would really like to see the Miss Magius Terra and those five additional Terra points go into that Noivern. I think that immediately makes the team more scary in prep. Um, having access to just spammable Boom Bursts or boosted Dracos, uh, a Dragon type that is so fast and able to revenge things as well as absolutely blow through a team is very, very useful. And they don't really have that on the special side when you just have Noivern, um, especially in its regular form. So um, I'd love to see the bottom two mons get dropped and Miss Magius's Terra move to Noivern. Outside of that, I think the draft actually fits itself very well the speed tiers are solid the bulk is there with wheezing and, and slitherwing and jirachi and rotom Mo, or not rotom Mo, rotom wash uh, and mouse offers you a great physical revenger um very consistent damage out of that thing and knockoff support so um it does actually land in b tier for me however i think if you make those changes um it very quickly moves into uh, like this middle tier A almost into that S on the lower side. Um, but yeah, for now, I do have it in B. I would like to see those changes for me personally. However, I'm very excited to see what Terra Miss Magius is actually going to do and how often it will come. I've seen Terra Jolteon. I haven't really seen Terra Miss Magius all too much. I know Nasty Plot is a really, really nice option. 
However, I just think that there's better options elsewhere on the board for you. So um, that's going to wrap up the Naranga Division. All right. And after a very short little break, we're back with the Uva Division. Um, we're going to start things off with uh, a very close friend of mine, Grandmaster D-Ray, coach of the SoCal Annihilation. Now, D-Ray is rocking out with Chan Pao, Ogre Pond, Teal, Lander, Asterian, Heatran, Hattery, Gudra as a Terra Captain, Alo Momola, Skunk Tank, Staraptor, Girder, and Cricketude. Um, this is a team where I think D-Ray did a really good job up until after Gudra. I think after Gudra, this draft really falls off. I think D-Ray would probably agree with me as well. Um, we have had a couple conversations uh, post-draft just about building and things like that for his matchups. And uh, I do think that there are some changes that could be made um, to really make this draft a lot better. However, anything that has Chan Pao in it is immediately very potent. And I think D-Ray did a good job in getting a couple of supporting mods for it. However... Allo, uh, as I've said in the past with the other division and their draft pool, uh, is very, very passive. And um, I, I just can't get behind Allo Skunk Tank, um, especially considering how you know weak D-Ray's team overall is to just getting spammed out by one type of move whether it just be ice or even like electric type moves you know it, it's it's there's resistances and, and a couple of immunities but those things aren't exactly the bulkiest pokemon um lando not always wanting to switch in uh, especially with rocks and, and things like that and being forced into more defensive positions isn't always what you want out of it and ogre pawn not the most specially defensive pokemon especially considering it is the teal mask version um I think D-Ray is very close to having a very good team. However, uh, I do have him in B tier with this one. I think Chen Pao is a really, really good Mon, but the bottom half of this draft really falls off for me, and I'd love to see some changes made um, to get D-Ray up into that A tier. But for now, he is going to be at the top of B tier, and uh, he will not move down, just to make that clear. This is probably the lowest you'll ever see a Chen Pao draft ranked. It's not because it's inherently bad, but I think D-Ray could definitely make it a lot better. Um, and yeah, so that's going to be it there for D-Rays. Next up, we have uh, Indominal Will and his San Antonio Sparse. This draft is kind of crazy. Darkrai, Garchomp, Manaphy, Florges, Spectriere, Fortress, uh, Kilowattrel, Sneasler, Carcoal, and Thwacky. Um, this is a draft that has a ton of offensive pressure. My biggest issue is... I just don't see how the pieces fit together. Um, it, Darkrai is really, really good. Garchomp's really, really good. Manaphy's really, really good. Spectre is really, really good. Uh, Sneasler is really, really good. All of these mons are extremely good at, at, at being offensive and, and really throwing that in your face. Um, Garchomp and Manaphy, you know, doing a little bit more than that with, with their defensive capabilities, of course. But... I just don't see how it works together. It's not to say it's a bad draft because I mean it's got it's got freaking Dark Cry and Sneasler together. That's one of the best combos you can have um, outside of like Intimidate Mawile, which isn't in the decks. There's not a lot that wants to switch into it. Um, Manaphy offers good support. Spectre is really solid in terms of a speed tier and things like that. But I just I, I don't see how it fits together. It feels like it's a lot of go, 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 go. But if it doesn't kill what's in front of it, I don't know how well it, it sustains. And I can't see it being like switching around all too well. With the main removal being Fortress, um, I think it really struggles in that sense. Uh, Kilowattrel being forced into boots most weeks, not ideal. Um, and it's just, it's just not quite there. It's very close, very similar to D-Ray's team where it's very, very close. Um, but it, it needs to be tweaked in a way that better builds around either Darkrai and Sneasler or builds around the Garchomp Spectre a little bit more. It just need, you need a couple more pieces to help flush out the roster that aren't Carcoal and Thwacky. It's great to have a bunch of offensive pressure, but I think having a more well-rounded draft, especially considering how good those first five picks are, um, would, would really, really benefit um will's team here i'd love to see some changes made to it i don't have will low though this is a b tier draft for me for sure 
I think it's very, very good offensively, but it really lacks in that um, you know, team synergy aspect and, and any kind of defensive capabilities outside of Garchomp, Fortress, and Florges for me. So uh, good luck to Will this season. I'd love to see this draft do well. And yeah, next up is Kurt the Buzzwool rocking out with his Emerald and Amorous, uh, Ursuline of Blood Moon, Zapdos Galar, Ogre Pond Water, Cresselia, Alolan Muck, Cyclozar, Tinkaton, Morpeko, Ursaring, Spidops, and Cinderace. This draft for me was very, very close to being in B tier, but it does actually end up in the bottom of A for me. Uh, I can understand some people probably not agreeing with that. However, I, I had to sit down and really look at the team to fully understand if I I can see what Kurt's going for. And I do see the Trick Room option with her Saluna. I like Ogre Pond Water in this bulkier fat setup. The main saving grace for this team is Cinderace. Um, having an offensive fire type just so that it can alleviate some of the pressure um, and, and really try to nuke through things, uh, giving it another form of hazard removal, which this team outside of Cyclozar really, really lacks, um, is really nice. I'm still not sold on Cyclozar. That might just be a personal opinion, but I just don't see that Pokemon being too good outside of just being a Gloomon. I think with Kurt's team, it is forced into um, kind of a more pressure-filled role, but uh, the Trick Room option that this team has uh, Tinkaton for rocks, the Ursuline of Blood Moon having something to at least play off of and pivot around, and Zapdos being able to U-turn into it, Cyclozar being able to U-turn into it, and web support, it does land at it just in the bottom of A. I'm really hoping Kurt can live up to this expectation because this is probably a little higher than this draft deserves, but I do like how he's built this draft. I do want to see it succeed, and I can see the pieces coming together for it. So good luck, Kurt. Um, uh, you better not make me look dumb on this one. And yeah, so uh, moving on now, we have Talon J Master in the Atlanta Talon Flames. This is a draft with Walking Wake, Snorlax, Ogre Pond, Rock, Armor Rouge, Overquill, Politoed, Gudra, Hisuian, Ribombi, Hoopa, Gastrodon, and Hunchcrow. Um, for me, this draft just doesn't quite tick the boxes it needs to. I get going with Rain, but with Wake, I think you're always better off with Sun. Not having a, a great Rain abuser is also really unfortunate. Um, being Ogre Pond Rock is also kind of unfortunate in Rain. Because I feel like this draft is going to be forced into bringing rain more often than not. I think Wake, outside of its weather, is not the greatest thing in the world. And another issue I do have with this draft is how easily dragon spammed it is. Gudra Hasui being neutral to dragon, walking Wake not really being a, a defensive dragon type, and the rest of it just being completely open outside of Rabombi. I think dragon types are going to come every single week. I think it's going to force Rabombi to come almost every single week, and I just don't see that being a good thing. Um, I don't fully understand the Gastrodon pick uh, at the end of it. It does give him a ground type. I do I, I'm not a super big fan of, of Gastro with this draft, however. I think if you were to get a ground type, it should have been earlier. Um, maybe instead of the Armor Rouge, which I also don't think super fits the rain kind of style that this draft is going for. Uh, doubling up on the Psychic types as well. And I'm just not a big fan of it, unfortunately. I'd love to be wrong. I'd love to see rain succeed and things like that. I think you could get a better rain abuser than overquill for swift swim purposes. Uh, and I just don't see, um, wake working out in the rain as often as I think it, um, it should be, it, it is expected to considering how this draft is spaced out. Uh, I do have this in C tier. Um, it's not to say it's a bad draft or unusable. I just think it's easily exploitable. Um, whether it be fighting spam, dragon spam, dark spam, things like that, I think this team is really going to have a tough time um, kind of maneuvering around that. But I'd love to be wrong. I'd love for Talon J Master to outplay everything that I'm talking about and have a phenomenal season. Make a couple tweaks here and there, and I could definitely see this draft moving up. Um, good luck this season, and I hope the best for you. Next up, we have Sir Jorge and Los Crams. Uh... Dragapult, Iron Bundle, Clefable, Slithering, Jirachi, Arcanine, Hisui, Sinista, Blissey, Pikachu, and Avalug. 
this is one of those drafts where it is extremely, extremely good. And then I kind of land on the Blissey Pikachu Avalug and I kind of lose that opinion of it being extremely, extremely good and just kind of fall down to it being really good. Um, Dragapult, Iron Bundle, Clefable, Slitherwing, Jirat. Like those five are probably coming almost every single week. Um, you know, maybe switching out the Slitherwing for the Arcanine Hisui every now and then or the Sinistra. The problem becomes when I f try to figure out the sixth mod on this team. Um, Blissey's good for hazard support, but realistically, that's about it. Uh, not having Wish Pass anymore does make it a little bit, you know, weird. And, and already having Clefable, I feel like it, it's trying to, you know, do the same role. And it doesn't really do that anymore, um, which is unfortunate because I really like Blissey. Um, Pikachu with this draft feels like kind of just getting an Electric type for the sake of getting Electric type. And Avalog, kind of the same thing just getting uh, a rapid spinner for the sake of getting a rapid spinner i'd love to have seen a bulky water with this draft um obviously you know draft board permitting it can be very difficult to steal a bulky water out of like a different part of the draft or going up in points and things like that um but there there are some available and i think if there was one spot that i would try to improve on with jorge's draft um, it is getting into a bulky water, whether that be something like, you know, a Vaporeon or or even, you know, a Don Dozo, uh, th things like that, where you can you can kind of see them working with the team, um, adding a little bit more support uh, across the board, considering the fact that, you know, your main fire resist is, is Dragapult or, or, or Arcanine Hisui, a little tough. Offensive fire types are probably gonna come very frequently, but um, I do really, really, you, it's hard to dispute the, the top five on this draft. Um, the offensive pressure that Dragapult Bundle puts on to every single team and then getting Clefable alongside that and Jirachi is just really, really spectacular. Um, it's hard to disagree with. It is going in the top of A tier for me. Um, good luck to Jorge this uh, season. And uh, yeah, I, I think this can be a really fun draft and to see in the finals for the UVA division. Um, that is to say, if it's not beaten out by something like Rupee's team here with the Columbus Swoo, uh, Tornadus Therian, Iron Treads, Rotom Wash, Infernape, Mimikyu, Dragog, Serena, Sneasel, Meloetta, Ditto. I think if you asked me what I think Gen 9 balance looks like, I would say this. Um, it has the hazards, it has spin in multiple positions, it's got spin block, it's got regen, it's got pivot, U-turn, 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 priority, uh, Terra Meloetta is also really, really good, and Ditto is a pain in the ass to prep for. Um, I think that yeah, it's really hard because this, this is a draft where I kind of look, you, you can look at it and just understand what it's supposed to do how well it does it and the fact that there's not a lot that you can realistically do to prevent that infernate's extremely versatile iron treads extremely versatile tornado Therian's extremely versatile just having three pokemon and i mean that you could you could even throw in you know the rotom washes and the meloettas having three to five pokemon that are so versatile in what they can do in a, in a format like this is just so beneficial because every single week you can go into your builder and be confident that you have an answer for whatever the best thing on your opponent's team is. Um, Rupee for me is my number one pick of the UVA division. Uh, I think this team is super nice. I'd love to use something like this in a draft myself. A little bit biased there, but uh, yeah, I'm super excited to see how well Rupee does with this team. Good luck this season and uh, yeah, Try, I'd, love, I'd love to see a Tornadus in the in the top like three for kill leaders because I haven't quite seen that in Gen 9 yet and I think it's one of those ones that can absolutely do it. So um, I would love to see that. Next up here, we have Gengar Heracross and the Spine Chilling Gengar. Iron Valiant, Empoleon, Glamora, Rillaboom, Hydreigon, Delphox, Mamoswine, Zapdos, Miss Magius, and Wigglytuff. Um, this is another draft where I think it's really, really cool. Uh, Iron Valiant, Empoleon, you know, two, you know, maybe a little early on the Empoleon pick, but Iron Valiant's a phenomenal mon in the format. Even without Terra, it is very, very, very good at breaking things. Um, and speaking of Terra, Terra Delphox is such a sleeper pick. That thing hits so hard. It has access to Nasty Plot, has access to every move it needs to hit 
everything. Um, and being able to Terra and remove some of those weaknesses is really, really nice for it. Um, Zapdos offering great support in terms of a pivot, Mammoth Swine for hazards, High Dragon for hazards, and Polyon for hazards. Wiggly tough for Wish Pass. Um, I think the weak spot is probably the wigs and the mismag, but considering the rest of the draft and what you're kind of looking at, it's not too concerning. Um, you could say that there's a, a potent ice type weakness, but between Thick Fat Mamoswine, Delphox, and Empoleon, uh, I just don't see, um, you know, those moves being fired off as recklessly as a couple of these other drafts may have them, you know, fired off against them. I think the hazard supports are a really nice thing for this draft. I think the speed tiers are really good. It's really fast. It's really like thick, bulky offense. Um, Iron Valiant there to kind of clean up the, the room after the fact and Wigglytuff to offer a little bit of support. Um, this is another one of my favorite drafts. Uh, I think it works really well together with everything, and it is going in S tier for me. Um, really excited to see how Gengar uses this team this season. Good luck and have fun. Next up is Emerald Miner and his Demolition Force. Um, probably my favorite logo of the uh, of the whole league here. Rocking out with Urshifu, Rapid, Mew, Tinglu, Pheasantipity, Iron Leaves, Noivern, Bisharp, Electros, Typhlosion, Hisui, Toadscroll, and Glaceon. This is another one of those drafts where I feel like the first four picks are really solid and then it really starts to fall off, whether that be because of snipes and things like that or just wanting to use your favorite Pokemon. Um, I think Iron Leaves is unfortunately fraudulent. I think that thing is really, really bad. I think 13 points for it is way too much. I think you're gonna not super like how you have to use it. I, I've had previous experiences with it and maybe it's just because I sucked with it but I just don't think that that is a round five pick. Um, I don't think it offers anything that, you know, your your Mew or your your Toad Scroll wouldn't have already. And I think those points could be better allotted elsewhere. Um, Noivern being Terra, though, does make up for it for me. Uh, good hard hitter, being able to spam moves. Electros being Terra, I think is a little funny. Considering it's already perfect typing, uh, being Levitate with the Electric, um, I'm, I'm interested to see what it's actually going to tear it into from week to week. Um, I almost would have rather have seen it on the Hisuian Typhlosion, just considering spammable Ghost and spammable Fire moves and Twist Scarf Eruption is really, really good, especially with Terra Fire. Um, but, you know, to each their own, Electros is going to be something I'm, I'm looking forward to watching. Um, Toad Scroll giving a little bit of Rapid Spin support, which the team does absolutely need considering its hazard removal is is mainly like defog noivern and <laughs> as far as i can tell maybe rapid spin view that's about it and you don't really want Mew to be forced into that spinning um you know roll every single week toad scroll it does offer that um but this is a team where i think you will probably see um spike stack come against it quite a lot uh but with that being said it does have things to punish that being like sub or Shifu Rapid and an offensive Mew and Tinglu just spike stacking you right back and forth forcing you to defog and, and things like that. So um, it's definitely not the worst draft that I've seen this, uh, this pool, but it's definitely not my favorite. I do have it at the bottom of B tier. I think the uh, first four Mons plus Terra Noivern can really make up for it. I would like to see a couple tweaks just in like Electros' Terra being moved to Typhlosion and things like that, but I do think it's a good draft overall, uh, at least usable and average. So good luck, Emerald Miner. Uh, really looking forward to seeing this in action. The uh, Iron Leaves, I'd love to be wrong about, but uh, fair warning, that thing is super, super bad. So um, next up, we have the Dapper Snapper in the Appalachia Apple Tons. Rocking out with Ursaluna, Monkey Dory, Golden Goat, Meow Scrata, Sylveon, Vigabolt, Dragonite, Samurott, Bramblegast, Flareon, and Electrode. Hot take, this is not my favorite draft. Um, it does have a lot of really good Pokemon at the top of it. However, no Trick Room support for Ursaluna, I think, is unfortunately a miss. I understand that there's Pokemon on the team that do get Trick Room. However, Trick Room support in the sense of setting it and then being able to get out safely or setting it, taking a hit and being able to get out safely doesn't really have that. The other thing, too, is drafting Dragonite without 
uh, like an, a top tier spinner. Um, you know, having bramble gas for removal is still bramble gas for removal, but you're forced into boots a lot with it. And I think that that's really restrictive of what Dragonite wants to do, especially considering its scale. Um, boots not being a bad item by any stretch of the imagination, but if you want to run the weakness policy sets or you want to run the leftover sets, uh, banded sets, things like that, you are immediately losing that multi-scale every single week. And not having a bulky water with this team, I think, is really, really rough. I think fire moves are super spammable into it. I think fire types are going to come almost every single week into this team because your two checks are Samurott and Flareon, and then you're there bringing Samurott and Flareon, which just isn't something, you know to overly concern yourself with. I think um, the team's gonna be forced into a lot of prep situations uh, that it might not like. I do like Terra Electrode, I think that's really fun. I think it offers a lot of uh, potency there. Um, but you know, when your fastest physical attacker is Meow Skirata, and then next on the list, it's all the way down at like, I believe it's Samurott. Um, I, I think you're really gonna miss out on a lot of um, breaking ability in mons that are, <laughs> you know, faster, you're, I feel like this team's forced into scarfs a lot. It's going to be a lot of scarfing, a lot of trying to out bulk an opponent, and without the longevity and the ability to safely remove hazards consistently, and, you know, being forced into boots a lot, it's it's really not um, quite set up how I'd like it to be to, to function uh, at its best. Um, I do have this draft in C. I'd love for this to move up. Uh, I'd love for everything on this team to succeed. However, I just... I don't like the flow of the team. I think it could be a lot better. Um, this is obviously subjective. It's not meant as an insult, but I, I just, I don't see this team flowing very well. I think it'll be very choppy and it'll really struggle to maneuver around a lot in game. That being said, it is still usable. There's a ton of really good Pokemon on this team. Um, Dapper Snapper, I really hope that you can make this work. I hope that you play really well with it and you completely prove me wrong. Good luck this season and yeah. Next up is Dashing Sceptile and his Seattle Sigilyph, Ogre Pond Fire, Palafin, Toxtricity, Mandibuzz, Articuno Galar, Bronzong, Diancy, Komo-O, Dunsparce, Donphan, and Triagonal. This is one of those drafts where it starts off really good. I think Toxtricity's picked a little too early. I think Articuno Galar's picked a little too early. However, it ends up really well because Diancie's still there. Komo'o ends up sitting. Donphan's a really great pickup for this team because it finally gets some removal. And Cryogonal's not a bad final pick. Um, between the Mandibuzz, the Donphan, and the Cryo, all having forms of removal, Diancie being able to hazard stack, Bronzon being able to get hazards up, and, and just the overall ability to really punish things coming in with ogre pond fire and palafin is really 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 good um i think overall the team does have a couple pieces that i'm not convinced on i'm not convinced on toxtricity and i'm not convinced on Articuno galler the rest of the team i actually really really like um you know maybe those are two pieces that can be tweaks likely maybe their personal preferences the terra options does com do completely like open up a whole bunch of new um like different different things that can be done with it like toxicity electric normal and, and also flying for dashing and, and articuno gallery being flying fighting and steel changing their weaknesses or or adding to their offensive capabilities making them much much better in that sense uh, is really really nice so i'm interested to see what dashing is going to do with this i think the team as a whole is very um, well composed uh, i think the one thing I'm not a huge fan of is how slow it is um, because of the speed and everything like that. Uh, I do have it at the bottom of A tier, um, but I think overall as a cohesive unit, it's very balanced. It breaks well for the things it needs to break for. And uh, I think it could be really, really fun to watch. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Dashing use this team. I think this is one of the best teams I think I've seen Dashing with, um, at least in Gen 9. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to see what Dashing can come up with with this team. Second to last here, but not to be second to last in the power rankings, is Shadow Ace and the Motor City Rotoms rocking out with Baxcalibur, Great Tusk, Slow King Galar, Hisuian Samurott, Iron Moth, Altaria, Regieleki, Amoongus, Charizard, Murkrow, Masquerain, and Dracolook. This team is so weird. 
Um, on paper, it is so weird to look at because you don't really know where to start. Um, I think my biggest issue with Shadow's team here is just how repetitive the typings get and how limited every Mon below Altaria is and what it can actually do outside of like Among Us. Um, I also think Terra Altaria in round six is a bad pick. Respectfully, I think taking that thing anywhere outside of the last three rounds is, is way too early. Um, I think you end up missing out on, on something that could have really benefited from the draft. Um, like I said before, I'm not a huge fan of Iron Moth with Sloking Galar. I think having the double earthquake weakness is not great. And because you also have a Moongus on there as your main earthquake resistance, it's really rough in that sense. Also, no bulky water on the roster does make it even more susceptible to just being spammed out by EQs. I understand that there's a Charizard, a Murkrow, a Masquerain, and an Altaria. However, with that being said, there is also a Charizard, a Murkrow, a Masquerain, and an Altaria. None of those being overly consistent performers in draft leagues. None of those being overly consistent brings in draft leagues. Um, being forced into bringing one of those or multiple every single week to have an earthquake resistance on your team is not always a good thing. Um, I do think Backscalibur pressures a lot of the things that want to come and spam Earthquake as well as Susumi and Samurott. However, you're you're forced into boots a lot with this team um, because of how many flying types you do have and the fact that you have an Iron Moth uh, and a Backscalibur everybody's gonna bring rocks i can tell you that right now if you're not bringing rocks against shadow's team you're not prepping correctly uh it's gonna force a lot of boots which for things like backs isn't always the best for a moth it isn't always the best it's not to say they can't function with the boots on it's just you want to have options to where you're you're able to play a team in a way that isn't stuck having to have the same item on things every single week and be as predictable. Reggie Alecki's not great hazard removal. Um, great Tusk is great hazard removal. The problem is Great Tusk being forced into removing hazards every single week is not always great for it. Um, with all that being said, it does still have, you know, a lot of offensive capability in those top five mons and slow king gallery's defensive capabilities is nothing to be scoffed at i do have this at the bottom of b tier um being able to you know uh chilling reception into backscalibur having that slow pivot into something like Hisuian samurai or iron moth is really really good they all break extremely well everything in the top five there that's not the slow king can absolutely blow through something on the opponent's side of the field all that being said, though, the bottom half of this draft is really not um, doing it for me. I don't think it's overly coherent, and I think things could have been, um, you know, combined together in terms of point totals to to make a more coherent team, and the Altaria pick is just really throwing it off for me. So um, good luck to Shadow Ace. I'd love to see this team be successful. I am a super big fan of Hisuian Samurott and Sloking Gatler, so anytime they're on a team, I do have a little bit of a soft spot for them, so I'd really like to see this team do well. Uh, good luck this season. Our final team of this very long video uh, is... <laughs> Arts and the Rustboro City Rejects rocking out with Gliscor, Chiyu, Okidogi, Corviknight, Jolteon, Milotic, Decidueye, Komala, Regidrago, and Screamtail. So very, very balanced draft. Um, the thing for me with this draft is it doesn't feel like it has that one Pokemon that it's overly built around. Uh, it's not to say it's a bad thing. Like I said, it's very, very, very balanced. Um, probably the most balanced team that we have in the entire draft um, in terms of like things working together. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of the round one Gliscor pick. You can make an argument and say it was round two. You know, it went to you, Gliscor. Even still, I, I think Gliscor without Roost just isn't as good as people are giving it, like pe people think it is. And the fact that, you know, your main form of removal is Corviknight, it takes away a lot of the hazard stat capability that Gliscor really likes to offer. Um, Komala can be there to spin, but having to bring Komala to spin um, instead of Corviknight to defog is not always a great thing. Um, 
you know, it's it's a draft that I I can see performing well if piloted well. If Arts can come out, you know, come up with some creative sets, you know, do his thing, have Jolteon really really explode for, uh, as a kill leader this season, the draft could do very well. Um, but Chi Yu for me is very limited and and very easily revenged, um, especially considering like Corviknight. You know, wanting to switch into the fighting type moves that are probably coming out after the fact uh, isn't the best thing in the world. But then, you know, you have Screamtail in the back, which does kind of shore up that weakness. And Okie Doggy being a poison type, you know, offers a lot of support for that along Gly Score. Uh, it's definitely not the top team in the draft, but it's definitely not the worst. I actually have this guy dead in the middle right here in B tier. Um, that's going to be it for the video. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you are new to my channel, please click subscribe. Please go check out all the UNPL coaches. Their description, uh, they, their names will be in the description down below. This has been a very long, long recording for me, so I'm sorry if I'm fumbling over my words a little bit. Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you stuck around this long, please take care and have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, this has been D-Double. Bye-bye.